Hello everybody, this is Stephen Whitfield with Drilling Contractor here at the 2023 SPE Hydraulic Fracturing Technology Conference in the Woodlands, Texas. With me right now is Brett Shell, founder and CEO of Cold Bore. We're here at his company's booth here on the floor of the conference. We're going to talk a little bit about their core technology, the smart pad system, enterprise communications. Brett, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. So let's talk a little bit about the value that this technology can have for drilling contractors. We were talking a little bit before this about uh, sort of having that sort of communications for completions. Can you just sort of explain that a little bit more here for our viewers? Yeah, yeah. So it's a pretty basic concept when you think about it. Uh, it's just that completions has kind of grown in a way that they've always done what they've currently done. And so a big problem that's showing up now is that all these different contractors are getting control systems on these sites. It's getting quite data heavy and none of them have the ability to connect to each other and communicate. So at its most basic level, frack and the fracking industry is ready for an enterprise communication company that allows all these services to show up on site, connect into a centrally based system, and then share all that data in real time, connect that to the cloud, communicate with their operators, do whatever they want to do. But to have it so that every single service company knows what they're connecting to, as opposed to when they show up on site, they don't know which company am I showing up with, how am I connecting to them, what do they use, it's just cold bore. They just show up, they plug in, and they get turn the light switch on. Now, when you talk about data, every company out there, so many stakeholders on a, on a given well site, every company has their sort of conventions for sort of naming data, handling data, and you're talking about sort of having one sort of interface, one sort of system for, for companies to use. So what are the challenges when you're working with these companies out in the field on, I, I guess maybe not buy-in, but sort of that, that sort of getting from one mindset of having all these different types of naming conventions, standardization, getting to sort of the standardized sort of setup? That, that's an awesome question. It's basically what you're asking is, completions is dying for a WITS ML standard that works for drilling but doesn't work in completions. And how are you going to possibly get a standard that everyone agrees on when they already have their own and they're commercially operating these big companies? So the answer for that is that it's actually also pretty simple. Every frack in the US has a timeline that's the same thing basically because a frack is a frack is a frack. Right? You got well swaps, you got wireline, you got frack, and then they repeat it over and over. That's common on every pad in the US. It's just that there was no company there to track that and then share that and make it accessible by everybody else. So the way we've approached this is we build that WITS, we call it WITS Evo. We build that time tracking of all the pads that we are on and all over the US the same way into our layer zero. All the control systems from everybody else snap on top. They use that as a supplemental timestamp to theirs and then it organizes the pad data and sends it to the cloud. So in the cloud or in their control systems is where all of that name and convention category, subcategory, complexity lives, but we format it on site and by the time we send it there, we just alias to their database and drop it in. That sounds pretty cool. Um, you know, I guess it's obviously been used. <laughs> obviously, yeah. company, yeah. obviously companies have used yeah. this. So what have you seen from your time using this in the field, like in terms of sort of the responsiveness or like what have companies been telling you? Uh, initially, we've been doing it for about seven years now. So initially there's always that resistance to change, right? But what's happening now is I think cold bore being present on all these pads is solving a chicken and the egg problem because everybody has a thousand different problems that are related to data or communication or whatever it is, but they're constantly looking at them like, I have to manage this on my own because this is my problem. And then it's on a very complex pad. When cold bore shows up, they might manage certain things on their own, but they might say, hey, can you just solve this problem for me? Allow me to connect and send me this data, or can you manage that data connection so I don't have to worry about it? And now they can really sequester the type of problems they have to fix as a frack company or a wireline company and not try to be a software and enterprise communication company. So the biggest thing I see happening is that all of these companies are really starting to push a lot of momentum and everyone's starting to work together, which is very different from oil and gas in the past when everyone's like, no, oh, this is my data. Okay, so the system's been out for a little bit, but you guys have made some updates to it, uh, particularly this layer zero thing that you guys are, are really talking about here at the conference. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we started out, uh, like everybody else, the industry was fairly nascent five or six years ago when all of us third-party digital completions showed up, and we all just started with screens. We all have a frac screen, we all have a wireline screen. Since then, everybody's migrated into their own space. Uh, Corva is great. They run up to where we call layer three. They're in the cloud providing analytics. Uh, then layer two is control systems that everybody has. Layer one is sensors. Cold bore went straight to layer zero. 
So we're building that foundation for everybody to connect to. That wasn't always the case because when we started out, we all kind of start the same. We're primarily focusing on operators and getting on their pads, pulling all the data and giving it to them. And now with layer zero, it's a true evolution to a that foundational layer so that all service companies, we work with Next Year, we work with Profrac, we work with Halliburton, we work with all these guys, and they all have their own reasons for enterprise communication that they would like it to exist. And so now we're very much this center point to make sure that everybody, we can facilitate this growth in the industry. So it's like uh, the first layer of the Lego tower of communications. You know that green piece when we were kids? Yeah. We were messing around and we had all our, our Lego all over the table and it was a mess. And then you get that green piece and everything starts to fit together. See, that's the way that one would think about this sort of system. Okay, Brett, thank you so much for taking the time to, talk, to speak with us. Appreciate it. My pleasure, man. Thanks. And thank you for visiting Drilling Contractor. Thank you.